All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to quickly convert videos using the WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe. It's a software made by Digiarty, who was nice enough to send me a key to unlock all the features of this software, but makes it very convenient to process most file types that you'll run into as far as videos are concerned into most other file types that you'll be able to use for things like editing, uploading, or putting on the most common digital devices like iPhones, Android, TVs, your computer, what have you. They have presets for just about anything and you can fine tune it after that. So once you get it downloaded and installed and booted up, you'll be greeted with a screen that looks a lot like this. All you gotta do is grab a video that you want to convert. I'll just do my PowerPoint or my Premiere Pro crash course tutorial. And then from there, it'll ask you to pick a format that you want to convert it into in one of these pre-made preset profiles. Um, I'm gonna go over here into general profiles to give you kind of an idea of what this does as its primary bread and butter. So I'm starting out with an MP4 file already, so I don't need to convert it into one but you do have the option of ups resing it into 2K size or to 4K size if you want to make a larger video and using their higher quality rendering engine, it actually looks very crisp. Whereas sometimes when you increase the size of a video and the source material isn't also 4K, it has some like blurriness to it, especially if text is involved, but this seems to keep it relatively crisp. Uh, you can also do MOV videos, ones specifically for iPhone, Android, um, the HEVC video, which is the um, H.265 kind of like codec encoding that allows you to do like DVD quality, M4V, MPEG, WebM, and a whole list of other ones over here in the sidebar, depending on what device you're trying to specifically make it for. But I do actually like the fact that there is some support for WebM built in to this editor so that you can actually create those for the web. Because it's weird that despite how widely used WebM video is now, so few encoders seem to want to tackle that. So anyway, I'm going to start by showing you an MOV video. And by selecting this, I have a quick option selector to say if I want to have a low quality video, but it'll render faster or if I want a higher quality video that might take a little bit more time to render. I'm not terribly worried about that because I know this is a shorter video, but I'm gonna pick high quality, slow, just so that we can see what it looks like. I'm gonna hit okay. And from here, we do have the option to immediately hit run and convert, but I wanted to point out a couple other features that I think are really useful. One of those features that I wanted to point out is the ability to actually preview your video over here in this preview window because this lets you know that A, your video is imported and working correctly, so you know that there's not any errors happening, because videos get corrupted all the time when you're exporting them or when you're recording them in the first place, so it's good to know that it's working. And the second reason is that a lot of people use video converters as a last-ditch effort to get some video footage working that might have been a little borked up in the first place, because for whatever reason, it plays on your video player, it plays on the original recording device, but it doesn't load into your editor, so you're gonna try to convert it to see if you can salvage that footage. So this will let you know if it's working, and while you're actually playing the video, they also have the option of taking screenshots using this little camera button so that you can like go over here and grab a quick still, open up this folder, and there you have some images that will allow you to do things like make thumbnails for use on YouTube. The other settings that are kind of handy is you have the ability to use hardware acceleration in exporting your video. And why would that be important? Well, hardware acceleration would drastically reduce the time it takes for you to export the video or to convert it into something else. It uses your onboard or your graphics card in order to speed up the process. So with Intel, it would either be using an Intel graphics card, which not as many people would have, or your onboard graphics that come with an Intel chip. NVIDIA, it would use your graphics card, and AMD would also use your graphics card or onboard graphics. I'm going to go ahead and enable the use the high quality engine, just because we can to keep it nice, crisp and clean looking. 
And if we wanted to, for whatever reason, I can hover over these other options over here and click on this gear in order to tweak some of the settings. Like I want to keep the original aspect ratio of this video. I'd like to keep the original frame rate, but I can also tweak it between 15 and 60 FPS. You can also tweak the aspect ratio down from 16 by nine to a more square aspect ratio, which would kind of smush the video a little bit and look kind of funny. So I'm just gonna keep the original. And then down here, we can make sure it's the correct audio codec, which AAC is the typical MOV. The, the sample rate is 48,000. The bit rate should be around 320, and then the channels are only two, because it's just a stereo video. So that all looks good. Um, we'll just hit OK. So from here, I can just hit Run. You also have the option of using a built-in editor up here in order to do things like quickly adjust the volume, add a subtitle file, do some cropping, or do a little bit basic trimming. If you did some basic trimming, like you could just render just that little portion there, that would make a much smaller video, and then you could even do a couple quick edits and then use the merge button to combine multiple clips together into a single video in the event that you need to make a couple of quick edits but you don't have the time to throw this into a big video editor. Maybe it's not installed, or maybe you just don't like using video editors in general. But you can do basic, simple edits using that. So that's about everything that you'd need to just do a quick conversion of one video to another. So I'm going to hit the Run button. And how long is it going to take to convert? Oh, how long is this video? Does it tell me? It's about 30 minutes long. So it takes about the same amount of time it would take to play the video in order to convert it into another file type. So that's not terrible. In fact, that's quite what I expected. And it's actually gonna take a little less time than that too. So that's good. It goes relatively quickly. So the other options down here are if you're exporting a lot of videos or you're converting a lot of videos and you're just gonna let it run while you go home or while you go to bed, you have the option to tell it to shut your computer down once it's done, which is kind of handy. That way your computer's not sitting all night, either using up electricity or just, you know, sitting there idle, doing who knows what. You can also have it open your output folder when the conversion is completed. I'm gonna leave that ticked because that will allow us to know when it's done and I can show you what the end result looks like and if it's still nice and crisp. So I'm gonna come back in about half an hour and we're going to take a look at that. All right, that didn't take very long at all. I'd say I'd be surprised if this ended up taking like even like a total of eight minutes, which was way, way less than the original estimate of like 38 minutes. Because I just went upstairs and got a fresh cup of coffee and came back and it was pretty much done. So we'll see in like five-ish seconds what the quality ended up being like going from the original MP4 video to an MOV video. Let's take a look at the Premiere Pro Crash Course video in MOV form. So that opens up inside of VLC. My main concern is always like, what is the quality like? Like when I first blow it up, can you still read things? Which you can pretty well, actually. So that looks pretty good. And then when we make it small again, it's really snappy and it seems to be playing just fine. So that's good. That's all good to see, and the, the audio sounds fine. It'll sound a bit reduced on your end because I'm obviously going to make it so that I can be heard over it, but this all looks good, and it plays smoothly, and that's what you want. So that's a look at just kind of like the basics of exporting and converting with this software. There's a few other details, like you can tweak where you export your videos to, how many CPU cores you want to use for this software, a couple of other, you know, basic self-explanatory things in here. You also have the ability to check your status of your, you know, if you've got this activated to a license. If you need to contact them for support, you've got a little button here that does that. And also there is the info help file. If you click on this question mark, that explains what all of the settings do in additional detail. Uh, the other feature that is kind of nifty is the photo feature. You can go into your like downloads and go to your 
like whatever file of photos you want and select a folder full of video or a full of images and then select a video file type. I'll do MP4 video. And then you can tell it to just convert that. And what this is going to do is it's going to take all of the photos in that file and it's going to turn them into a slideshow. So if you ever needed to make like a quick presentation slideshow or a time lapse of some kind for like someone's birthday or like a celebration of a special like milestone for a sports team, you can put the highlight images together in a folder and it would convert them into a quick slideshow. So that's kind of neat too. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has just been a brief look at how to convert videos using the WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe. It does a nice job. I was actually pleasantly surprised. It even has support for WebM video files. And I've been talking about how I should probably go find out all the best solutions for converting videos into WebMs that are available out on the web. And this one is one of them. It does a nice job of producing high quality WebMs. I've actually been pleasantly surprised with how easy it is to grab videos, tweak the settings after you select what kind of file you want to produce with it, and then hit run in order to get a converted file out of it immediately. You don't have to fiddle with 50 different windows. You don't have to fiddle with like really confusing sounding settings that are hidden. It's all right there. All the settings are the same for every video file type. It's just some of them are disabled or, in, or re enabled depending on what file type because some of them don't support everything the same way. And then you just hit run and you're done. So, yeah, this has been H or WinX's HD video converter. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, throw those in the comment section below. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.